Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV. Try us free. On this episode of North American Whitetail, Editor-in-Chief Haynes Shelton and his dad head to Saskatchewan just in time for the best of the rut and the worst of winter. Haynes shows us how he stayed warm in the Arctic cold in the On Target segment. In his Dr. Deer segment, Dr. James Kroll discusses timber elements. And then we visit the Iowa Deer Classic for a big buck profile of Iowa's new number two typical by bow, the Kurt McCarty buck. North America's most popular game animal has existed for over two million years, long before modern man. It's the single species serious hunters everywhere recognize immediately, and the one that became so popular it warranted a magazine dedicated solely to it, a brand that has now existed for over 40 years. It's the North American Whitetail. Okay, 18 hours in. We're here in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. Negative six. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of snow on the ground, and there's a really big snowstorm coming in tomorrow. Could be whiteout conditions. It's gonna be nasty tomorrow. Excited. Finally found the cold weather after hunting for it all year. I know, it's like 70 degrees in almost the entire Midwest back in the United States, so we just decided to head about 2,000 miles north of Saskatchewan. And we found the cold. <laughs> yeah, we did. This is our first morning in Saskatchewan, Canada. We're hunting with Northway Outfitters. And I can't even describe to you what it means to me to be here. This is a hunt of a lifetime, something I've dreamed about my whole life since I was a little kid. It's negative 20 Celsius. A big northern clipper moved in the last couple days. Dumped snow all over the place. We couldn't hunt yesterday because our guides had to cut a track into the blinds. But we're here, running over bait, alfalfa and oats piled up out there about 100 yards. We're gonna hunt all day, all week, hunt some giant Canadian bucks. We'll see what happens. There's a young buck right there on the bait pile. Another one coming behind him right now. He's getting ready to jump that fence. That is pretty cool. Really, really cool to see these bucks out here eating on the bait pile. They're young bucks. But it's just amazing how big bodied these deer are up here in Canada. They're tall, they're long, they're heavy. Cannot wait to see a giant mature bug, how big they're gonna look. We're enjoying it. North American Whitetail is brought to you by Browning Clothing by Easton and by Ram Trucks. It's maybe about nine o'clock. Sun's starting to come up now. We haven't seen any deer at all. 
is so freaking cold this morning. All my drinks are frozen. We're trying to put them by the heater so they don't freeze solid. Sandwiches for the day are frozen. Hunting up here is, in a lot of ways, a mental game. It's not a difficult hunt, technically, in the sense that you're hunting over a bait pile. It's 100 yards away. There's big, big deer up here. You're in the game the whole time you're here but you're just trying not to get cold and you're trying to make sure you have the gear and you're sitting 10 or 11 hours a day in a blind and you can't move. So you sit still all day and you, your knees are bent. Like yesterday, my knees just hurt when I got home because they've been bent all day. It's hard. And like what you have got to do you gotta want it, like in your mind. You have to want it all day. That you wanna kill a big buck. That's what you came here to do. To see one of these northern deer and to kill one and to say you were able to do it. That's the challenge, but it is definitely a mind game. We're playing that game all day long, every day. Hopefully, it will pay off. But we're not giving up. We're gonna be here till the bitter end. Just gotta man up and freaking do it. Well, folks, we're analyzing different parts of the whitetail's habitat, and today we're talking all about woodland habitat and terrain features you'll find, and you know, these can include saddles, benches, bowls. There's so many different terrain features right. in the woods, Doc. Right. And you know, what I want to talk about is how we identify these locations, how deer travel through these spots. And right. you know, we can check them now digitally on our phones and yeah. we can go and look at them in person with our eyes. Yeah, we have so many resources available to us now that we didn't have when I started my career. You know, uh, with the internet and everything else you've got and Onyx and, and apps like that, you. It's amazing what you, but, but understanding how deer perceive them and how they use each of those is very, very important. The saddle is a connector between two drainages. Whitetail deer are drainage animals. The doe groups live around on drainages. The bucks travel from drainage to drainage to get to the does and they cross at saddles. It's completely logical why they do that. The bowl like it's in front of us here is a big bedding area big, big, usually a sanctuary, and you usually don't want to go in there. Right. So you know the deer are going to be bedding in there, and now you have to figure out how they're going to get out, and the saddle is one of those ways. Yeah, and you know, I tell you, in the woods, deer are using these terrain features to follow the path of least resistance. If you check a topo map and you see all those really, really tight lines spaced together, that's very rugged country. It's hard to climb. Those are steep hills, and you see those lines open up and get wider and wider. Well, those are paths of least resistance. Those are easier spaces to walk, less steep. Deer are going to navigate on those paths just like we would. We want to take the easiest route. And you talk about bowls and depressions, you know, deer are there because it provides a thermal and a wind advantage. You know, a bowl is a bedding area and a rutting area because it's sucking thermals and sucking scent down into those places. And it's a perfect place for a buck to check and see if he can smell a doe. Yeah, behind us we've got a bench, and a bench is very critical to bucks. They like to lay up on those benches because they like to look into the wind, okay? They're looking to see what's going on, and they can smell what's coming on them. It's a great spot. And by the way, the old hunters were probably better woodsmen than us because we're standing here talking about all this, and right behind us is an old iron stand. Somebody understood these elements a long time ago. Absolutely. Yeah, well folks, learn how to read topo lines, check it out on a map, use Onyx as a software program, and go and visually check with your eyes to see these terrain elements in the woods. We're here at the Iowa Deer Classic, checking out some of the great whitetails that are on display. In Kurt McCarty, man, I have seen everybody coming to check out this incredible whitetail that you took this year. 
October 13th, 2022 in Dallas County, Iowa. This is a tremendous six by seven whitetail. He has a net score officially now, 195 and five eighths. Folks, this is now the all time number two archery typical from the state of Iowa. Unbelievably, this is the biggest typical from Iowa in 32 years. Everything about this deer is so, so big. He's 23 inches on the inside. Both of the main beams are over 30 inches long. He has G3 tines over 13 inches. Just an outstanding deer. One of the greatest typicals ever from the state of Iowa. And he's on display here at the Iowa Deer Classic. Kurt, congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, it's so cold as you can just see my breath rolling out. We just got set up for the morning. We survived the snowmobile ride in. Wow, it was cold. All my stuff was covered in snow, but we're here in a great spot. We're running late. It was daylight by the time we got in here. But it allowed me to see this country for the first time. This is like a bunch of big valleys and ravines that all neck down into like a drainage. Deer tracks and trails everywhere. There's a couple giant bucks in here. Big bucks. Maybe today is the day. Okay, we got a doe in here. She's starting to act hot. She squatted in the bait. Immediately a buck came out from the right hand side. He looks like a big old body buck, but he's a young buck. Like a five by four, nine pointer. Absolutely beautiful with all the snow and that sunlight coming down. I can only imagine what a big giant is going to look like. showed up there's a buck out in the bait he came behind the bait out of that thicket and he looked left to right and he checked this whole area out trying to find what he had heard second buck just showed up. I know they must have heard us coming in the middle of the day. Maybe a big one will come in next. Okay, we just had a doe come into the bait pile. She's by herself. It's about 20, 30 minutes of light left perfect scenario, we just need a buck behind her. On the fifth evening of a really cold hunt in Saskatchewan, as an immature buck fed in the bait pile from stage right, a giant, fully mature buck emerged, and I knew we were about to get the shot that we had waited all week for. Let him get broadside. North American Whitetail is brought to you by Hornady, by Hunt Monkey Gloves, and by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Let him 
get rolls there. Smoked him. Smoked him, buddy. Oh, smoked him. Yes. Oh my gosh. Folks, we just shot a big buck. Okay, we just got out of the blind. I got the rescue party here with me. I got my dad, got James Graham here at Northway. So we got about 100 yards to walk up here to where I shot the buck. We're gonna look for blood. Then he jumped over that fence and he headed down into the bush. I don't think he's gonna have gone very far. All right, we got blood and James is hollering. He just found him. We're gonna see if we can get down there and take a look at him. It's slow going here in all this snow. Oh, wow. Let me get him out of here. Look at that body. Look at that beautiful, beautiful deer. Folks, wow, this is Day six in Canada, Saskatchewan at Northway Outfitters. Really the last day of our hunt. And it has been an epic adventure, a hard hunt. It's been the coldest conditions I've ever been in in my life. It's tough, tough hunting. But this is one of the best adventures I've ever been on. And this is why we came right here is to kill a big old Canadian giant monster buck. It's something I've dreamed about since I was a kid. Really appreciative of all the guides at Northway for taking such good care of us. And I just cannot be happier or more grateful. And I can't wait to call all my buddies tonight at North American Whitetail and let them know that we got it done because everybody was cheering for us and rooting for us. And I can't thank them enough for that. All right, guys, about 20 minutes ago, I got a call from my dad that he just shot a big buck here in Saskatchewan, Northway Outfitters. He had really bad cell reception, but it was coming through like, shot one, big one, get out here, get out here. And I just got confirmation they found the buck. It is a great, great whitetail. I'm so happy for him and so excited. This has been the hunt of a lifetime for us. Is that some kind of Canadian whitetail right there? Look at the mass on this deer. Unbelievable. He's got an extra beam coming up off his main beam. Just an old monarch of a deer. All right, folks, welcome to this week's On Target segment. Appreciate you guys watching my awesome hunt in Saskatchewan, Canada. But I'll tell you, it was some of the toughest weather conditions we have ever hunted in. We couldn't do it without the right gear. That's what it's all about. It started for me with a moisture wicking base layer. Browning has some great options. This one is next to skin, very lightweight. Again, it takes that moisture away from your body that keeps you warm and so you don't lose a lot of key body heat and you know merino you hear a lot about it the hype is real browning has got some great merino options this one right here was my second layer top and bottom it really wicks the moisture away from you very very lightweight and it dries super quick so you don't get that sweating on the way to the stand and get super cold afterwards so after my base layers i went to a pretty heavy Berber fleece from Browning. This is called the Dutton system, and it has a great heavy pile Berber fleece all throughout the inside. Lots of pockets for storage, very ergonomic piece of gear. And it's heavy as far as insulation, but not by weight. This will not weigh you down and make you feel like the Michelin man. All of it's in the new Ovix camouflage pattern. The jacket, as well as the bibs. This is about a three quarter bib. It's not too high on your chest. It's a little bit shorter. Great piece of gear that I really enjoyed wearing. 
And if you're hunting in the cold weather, everybody knows how great down is. Browning's got multiple down options. This is the one I selected for Canada. It's called the Arctic Down. It's a very heavy fill of down. Down is great at cutting the wind. It protects a lot of that body heat that would have escaped from wind chill. So that's my core. And from there, I really wanna talk about how I kept my extremities warm. So my hands, I wore a liner glove from Hunt Monkey. These are super lightweight. You got a lot of dexterity. You need to get something out of your pack, eat lunch, etc. You gotta have a liner glove. But the warmth is all about the exterior, which in a place with a lot of snow, you gotta have waterproof. Hunt Monkey has multiple waterproof options with Gore-Tex, Thinsulate, insulation, as well as great features like shooting fingers, the ability to use your phone, excellent gloves, lots of options. Probably the most often asked question I had was how to keep my feet warm. And it all starts with the right sock. You know, it depends on what your preference is, if you like wool, merino, uh, et cetera. Hunt Monkey, again, has got some great new sock options. This is what I wore in Canada. Just one sock. You don't have to have two or three socks. The key is you need airflow to actually keep your feet warm. This is how I stay warm in Saskatchewan. I uh, hope it helps in case you ever venture up north and try to kill those big white tails where the mercury drops way low. To celebrate 20 seasons of NAW TV, Old Trapper is giving you a chance to win a season's worth of Old Trapper beef jerky. Scan the QR code or register using the link.